decision to go into distilling was obviously a huge step for you guys, moving from totally different careers. So what was that catalyst moment where you were like, this is what I want to do? It was sort of a, a confluence of factors. And there was this whole go local thing, there was the, the growth of the organic, um, people's passion for organic um, goods, and our individual passions about distilling. And we sort of thought the three could be married well into a successful business story. And so we've, we've crafted a, a plan over you know, a number of months um, and, and sort of got ourselves to um, that warm and fuzzy feeling like we could make this happen. Um, but you know, quite honestly, ultimately, we got about 90% of the way there. And in the end, you, know, you never feel 100% comfortable. I think that last 10% was just sort of a leap of faith we had to take that we can make this work. We worked hard enough. It's scary in a lot of ways. It's scary because of all the bureaucracy you have to go through. Right. And it's scary because um, most people who open distilleries have a, a, a limited amount of, of commercial distilling under their belt. But it's sort of crazy. I mean, right. you have to, as part of your licensing, um, submit a floor plan of your facility and uh, have, you know, receipts for your equipment. So you need to buy your equipment before you get your license, which is a scary proposition because it's right. not cheap and you're committing a lot of capital um, before you've even had a chance to sell anything, um, let alone get your license. You also have to sign a lease, which maybe is even crazier than having to buy yeah. equipment. So you, you, <laughs> wow. you, you tie yourself into a three-year lease right. without knowing whether you're going to actually get the permit. So it's, it's, a, it's a really scary process.